We try to make goodwill the framework for our practice. After all, it was the framework for the Buddhist practice. He wanted it true happiness. That was goodwill for himself. And he wanted a happiness that was blameless. It was goodwill for others. Beyond that, once he had found the way to that happiness, he wanted to teach it to others. So they could find that happiness too. That was a lot of goodwill. And so we think of the example of a John Munn who would spread thoughts of goodwill to all beings at least three times a day. And we give the practice a try. And I've heard many people say they can think thoughts of goodwill, but they don't get any warm feeling out of it. Well, it's not necessary to have the warm feeling. As long as you think about other people's well-being and take that into consideration as you plan your actions. That's an awful lot right there. After all, you're going to be having goodwill for spiders and snakes, for people for whom it's very hard to have a warm feeling. And those are the cases, actually, where the goodwill is most necessary as a protection for yourself. so that you don't do anything unskillful around those beings. You don't dismiss them saying, well, it doesn't matter what I do with them. You have to take everybody into consideration, and everybody includes animals as well as people, and bad people as well as good people. We don't pretend that there are no bad people out there. We don't turn a blind eye to their bad habits. But we keep remembering that we need our goodwill. That's why we do it. We don't give it only to people that deserve it. We give it to everybody. If the question of deserving comes up, just ask yourself, well, do you deserve goodwill? And there the case may be. The answer may be no. If you look at your behavior. But then that's still no reason not to have goodwill. So the question of deserving shouldn't get involved. You want your goodwill to have an independent source inside that's independent of other people's goodwill and of other people's goodness. Because again, it's your protection. You want to be protected on all sides. Think of that image that John Cha picked up from a John Munn, who said the practice should be in the shape of a circle all around. In other words, it's not something you do only at certain times and only with regard to certain people. It's like a fence around your house. If the fence is 95% around the house, it still means there's 5% where animals and other things can get in. You want the fence to be 100% as your protection. So goodwill is not necessarily a warm feeling. I mean, feelings of the heart will come in. Remember, it's metta jittena, with the jitta of goodwill. That's the attitude you spread how you spread it. And jitta can mean both heart and mind. In Buddhism, they don't see a clear distinction between the two. So you lead, in this case, with the mind, reminding yourself of the reasons for why you need to have goodwill. So that when you meet up with people you don't like, you still can have goodwill for them. and may not be warm and friendly, or warm and gentle and tender, but it still is friendly in the sense that 
you don't mean anyone any ill. Because after all, your main work is inside. And you don't want to stir up any entanglements, any conflicts outside that are unnecessary, that will get in the way of the work that really needs to be done. That's why we say that goodwill is the framework or the fence. It surrounds the field inside where you really have to do your work. Now the sense of joy, well-being that you would share with others, that's going to have to come from your cultivation of your own potentials for happiness inside. Developing right view, right effort, right mindfulness. As I said, these three qualities surround all the factors of the path, and you want to make sure they're strong. It's like making sure that you've got the right food that you're growing in your fields. You've got your basic nutrition covered. This right view tells you that the suffering you're experiencing the suffering that's weighing down the mind, that comes from within. And a lot of us resist that. We say, it's because of so-and-so, it's because so-and-so did this, or so-and-so has this attitude toward me. That's looking outside the fence and looking in the wrong way. You've got to look inside. The fact that you're hungry is because you haven't provided yourself with food. And the more food you have inside, then you have some more to share. And this is when the quality of the heart begins to grow. That you do have a sense of well-being that comes from the practice. The mind can settle down, be with the breath in the present moment, and simply breathing in and breathing out is a refreshing experience energizing experience, calming experience, whatever the, the mind needs at that time. And when you've got your own true happiness covered, then it's a lot easier to have a warm feeling for other people. You feel sorry for them because they're missing out on the food that you've got. So it's by taking care of yourself that you Develop that quality of warmth where it's appropriate. Simply repeating thoughts of, may they be happy, may they be happy, doesn't necessarily bring warmth. But if you've got some good qualities inside, that you've nurtured inside, then the warmth will come. The heart side will come, because your own heart now has been satisfied. So to make metta a quality of the heart and the mind, you have to do more than simply metta practice. You've got to work on the problems inside, the way in which you're creating unnecessary suffering for yourself, and getting past any of the obstacles in the mind that refuse to admit that, refuse to see that. Because as long as you refuse to see that, you're going to continue to create more suffering. And then you take it out on others. Jamahabu is in images of having dirt inside you. And so when you start thinking about other people, you just fling the same dirt around. But when you've got a sense of goodwill inside you for yourself and a sense of well-being inside you, then you found that, yes, you can provide for your true happiness. That's when the goodwill begins to round out. So it's not just a mental quality or something you say to yourself. But it's something you feel. But you don't feel it so strongly that you get blind to the fact that, yes, there are bad people out there. Even then you have to be on your guard.
But the goodwill takes on added dimensions because you're, you're looking after yourself well. To try to have both the fence and a good crop in your field. You're protected, you're nourished. And that's when you have more goodness to share.